With autumn underway, we return to visit Great Dixter, former home of Christopher Lloyd, the prominent gardener and gardening writer who continued his parents' legacy at the 15th century manor house to nurture the six acres of arts and crafts style outdoor rooms and meadows, fostering in the quiet countryside of South East England, an exciting centre of horticultural education, influence, imagination, experimentation and floral artistry that continues today under the custodianship of Christopher Lloyd's head gardener, friend and fellow visionary Fergus Garrett. In this video we focus on some superb plants or cultivars that we've never highlighted on our channel before but which are truly lovely for late summer and autumn colour and which we wish we had in our own garden right now. We were certainly feeling the love with pink Persicaria orientalis, also known as Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate, stooping as if to gently embrace visitors on the barn garden pathway. It is a sun-loving annual, flowering from July to the first frost, growing to five feet and taller. The foliage feels spacious in habit. Gently branched stems have an airiness and a balanced presence which doesn't diminish the view beyond. So if you were to grow this in the garden at home, it wouldn't add an overpowering sense of height, just a loosely architectural overstory charm for late summer and autumn. As we wander along the iconic long border at Great Dixter, repeated plantings of this tall persicaria establish a rhythm and form that help create, in this diverse and interesting planting space, a sense of cohesion and seamless transition from one pool of colours and textures to the next. Christopher Lloyd is cherished for freeing the spirit of the herbaceous border by integrating and juxtaposing shrubs and trees with traditional herbaceous planting and introducing unexpected undulating heights. This was at the time a unique and influential approach. From Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate to a blushing recipient below. 
This gorgeous Cosmos Apricotta has rose pink petals stained with apricot and looks fabulous against a haze of bronze Miscanthus fountains, also providing great textural contrast with teasels with a hint of warmth mirroring the warm brown seed head tones. Conventional wisdom holds that a shrub should be planted a suitable distance from a path to allow for growth. But in the barn garden at Great Dixter, this elegant lace cap hydrangea spills itself into the passing space, demanding appreciation of its captivating beauty from every angle. Native to China, this deciduous shrub matures up to three meters in height, preferring a sheltered spot in full sun to light shade. Flower clusters will emerge blue in acidic soils. Referred to as the rough-leaved hydrangea, its attractive elongated foliage actually has a more gently furry feel. As with this lovely hydrangea, at Great Dixter the visitor doesn't come so much to look at plants as to immersively experience them. In the high garden, one can be just a few feet from another person on a closely neighbouring pathway and they are entirely invisible. Only the rustle of their progress through the generous planting gives away their presence. There is a tactile sense of being shepherded by nature through softly yielding foliage. A sense of human smallness in a grander scheme. And then the path opens to a refreshing pool of blue surrounded by the rich colours of amaranthus and it's as though you have journeyed through a forest to reach a beautiful lake surrounded by autumnal trees.
The ultimate 360 degree immersive experience at Great Dixter is in the enclosed exotic garden where Christopher Lloyd and Fergus Garrett replanted ailing rose beds with a walk-in jungle of exotic foliage. Plants demand your full engagement with them, stepping over, ducking under, pushing through and peering round foliage. Every contrasting shape and texture, every drifting scent and gentle leaf rustle seems magnified in this magical green chamber. Conifers have a powerful presence, seemingly personified, transformed into wise old characters from ancient fairy tales. They whisper their secrets in a language we have almost lost. The sunk garden with its central pool is completely surrounded by the barn garden and bordered on the northwest side by the deep warm tones of the clay tile roof of the 500 year old great barn. This same warmth radiates from pots of rudbeckia in rich autumnal colours, busy with pollinators visiting the cone shaped central heads laden with their banquet of late season pollen and nectar. Rubeckia are native to North America and are often associated with prairie style planting. When growing them in containers, it is particularly important not to allow them to dry out as they may suffer from powdery mildew. Once petals fade, the central cones provide attractive structure and seeds for birds in winter. For container happy, generous orange flowers with a mahogany flare, try Rubeckia summerina orange. Another cultivar sold as specifically suited to pots is Rebeccia flamenco apricot in multi-tonal pinks and apricots with a rich red center to the rays. It adds a really painterly charm to planters. <laughs> In the wall garden, the visual temperature of the potted plant tableau is ramped up. Try Scarlet Sage for searingly saturated impact. Neil, a characterful cat rescued from Kabul, seems drawn to this warm place. In contrast to the sizzling wall garden display, around the front porch the container theatre 
is a soothingly lush and lovely medley of fascinating green leaf texture and architecture in a masterpiece of staging with added depth of bronze foliage and white and gold floral highlights. As a visitor, it's always rewarding to explore a garden for a second time, especially after an intermission for refreshments, when you can chat about and gather your thoughts on all you've experienced. For us, it's a case of once for the heart and once for the head. In other words, the first time is totally in the moment, just absorbing and enjoying and embracing everything that floods the senses. The second time is when the catalyst of inspiration really takes effect, making mental notes of how and when and where a plant or planting combination could work perfectly in your own garden, even if it's just hypothetical, because realistically Great Dixter is a high art, high maintenance garden, beyond the replication of mere horticultural mortals. It mostly feels like a walk in a beautiful dream, but maybe we can take home a little dream of our own.
This gracefully statuesque plant reaches up to six feet in height and branches out to about five feet wide in an airy cloud of soft pink petals. It is fully UK hardy, flowering from July through September. And for us, its charm is that it feels a little wild, but gently polite at the same time. It's one of those charmingly pretty but distinctive plants you suddenly realise your own garden is waiting for. By the end of the afternoon, there were few visitors around, but this garden was as busy as a bustling town. 